We've seen for the past year or so that prices for cattle have been coming down from their record highs. Prices for beef at the grocery store, though, have been slower to respond. Neil Malasson joins us for this week's Bottom Line. And Neil, for quite some time I've been threatening you that you're going to have to find a new job if you don't give us better news for beef prices and you're still here and the prices are still through the roof. Well, no, the prices are better than last year and as a bonus they're expected to continue to be lower throughout the rest of 2016. But the bad coming. news is, is that we are going to be a, a long, slow time for that, number one. Number two, we're coming down from record high prices, and the price drops that are occurring are not taking us back down to where we were prior to 2014, when the last big spike in prices occurred. If you'll remember, prices for beef as well as for cattle soared back then. We have to go back to cattle prices around that time because that's where our steak story begins. Calves go Going into feedlots, we're hitting prices never seen before, as high as $307 per hundredweight, which marked a $100 gain from the previous year. Even though prices came down from that precipice in 2015, the average price for calves was actually higher last year. Now, since that time, we've seen cattle prices decline, especially as we entered into this year. The USDA cattle prices are dropping 1.5% from December through January and dropping almost 6% from one year ago. This is due to weaker than expected demand for beef exports, higher weight heifers providing more meat than expected, and slowing domestic sales. In other words, the prices for beef have finally started to impact consumer demand, and so we're seeing a small glut in meat products, especially even as fewer cows are going into feedlots. And so we're seeing a small glut in meat products, even as fewer cows are going into feedlots. Now, I know it might be difficult to imagine how there's a glut in beef products right now, especially with fewer cattle around. That slower demand for beef is part of it. Meat can either be stored in freezers of meat packers or be on the hoof, if you will. And even though we have fewer cattle going into feedlots, the feedlots themselves are chock full of cattle and the packers just aren't buying it, literally. Frozen beef stands at about 518 million pounds as of January, which is up 1.2% from December and more than 5% above one year ago. And at the same time, cattle marketing, that's the sale of cattle to meat packers, was at 87% of where we were in 2015. That's the lowest monthly marketing since the USDA began measuring in 1996. So to sum it up, not as many cattle being sold to packers, who then sell to the grocery stores, and a huge supply of beef in storage, which is putting pressure on those packers to get rid of it at increasingly cheaper prices. The bottom line is we're expecting a sharp drop in prices this year. One supply firm, in fact, is estimating the drop between 10 and 17 percent. Now, while the USDA is a bit more conservative than that, the issue, as I said at the start, is when you're coming down from record high prices, it isn't exactly great news, and we're just going to have to deal with those prices until until we start seeing, you know, I think as the year goes on, lower prices and it's starting to build, build momentum. I know that we've seen lower prices for corn and fuel. How is that going to impact anything, especially for our farmers? Well, especially for corn, you know, it's, it's helping our livestock producers suffer through some of these precipitous price drops. Mm -hmm. Oil, you know, that's more on the consumer end because not so many cows are going into feedlots. So we have kind of that break right there. The feedlot to packers to consumers is where we have that big glut. We have a shortage of, you know, the cows going into the feedlot. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of a split there. I think as time goes on, as we rebuild our national livestock herd, more cattle will go in and that chain will be a little more even. And also, I think Kristen will be a little happier. A yeah. little bit, Just maybe. Little. Maybe? The bottom line here is this heifer would still like some better news from Neil Malasson. <laughs> Not touching that one. No, we shouldn't. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll bring you our show from New Orleans for the annual Commodity Classic. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twylatv.org and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For all of us here at Twyla, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week. Thank you.